Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, little video. So for this one, it's uh, it's the second video I'm gonna do about Redux process because um, I got a lot of questions about my last one get kind of updated because they have changed their, their um, API in the version five. And this is what we're gonna do finally. We, I'm gonna just show you how you can use it now with version five on a React Native project. So, uh, right now, the application I have, it's really simple, okay? Nothing crazy. What I do, it's I have a, an input where you type your own name, example, Bob, you click submit. Now the name uh, call the function, uh, the action updates uh, username. And finally, we update the state with this, Bob, because we don't persist nothing. When I refresh, I don't still have my name. So this is what we're gonna do. In this one, I'm gonna just show you how you can install Redux process on an application is already built. So for that, you need at least to know how to start with Redux and things like this, because this tutorial is just about showing you how to install Redux process. So my code is pretty straightforward, okay? So inside my code, what I have, it's I have an application. We have just uh, the provider of React Redux, we wrap everything. So this thing, the app is the root component. And this one uh, receive the username input. This username input is the input finally who everything happened in this app. So he start with a state who have a username. We're gonna be equal to the username we get from the map state to product of Redux or an empty string. After that, we have an indel change plug to the text input because we want to control the input. So when we change, when we uh, type, we update the state here so we can update um, the value. And we have an handle submit function. We finally call the dispatch uh, update username method. I just show you. I'm gonna show you right there. This one. We receive a username, return the type, and return the username. And the initial state for this reducer, it's username and empty string. That's it. So it's a really really simple uh, Redux um, uh, application. So first. If you don't know what I've just shown you, uh, would be a good idea to just jump back better, uh, more in Redux, just because they, this is really straightforward here. So here, uh, in my store, I have nothing about, I just have add the Redux logger and the Redux DevTool extension, who I plug finally to Expo with this open tool. So now I can open it and get it there. So the Redux logger is the thing who uh, you see here when I click submit, we see all the action and everything, okay? So how we're gonna start with that is we're gonna jump in the terminal and we're gonna install the only package we need, Redux Persis. So this package uh, we're gonna install and by this time we're gonna read a bit about it. So Redux Persis, as you know, it's a way finally for you to persist and reiterate your Redux store. So when you work with a project with Redux, a lot of the stuff you're gonna want to like kind of persist in the storage of the user, like a storage, async storage in Redux, uh, React Native. And um, this library just make it like really easy to work with. So you don't need to do all your get by yourself on your local storage and things like this. So I think it's pretty nice. So here, what I'm gonna do, if you use a React project, you can do the same just by using the storage uh, like that default to local storage, okay? So for me, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go inside my store and this is where we're gonna uh, create finally uh, the persist, the persist store. So here we're gonna import from Redux persist to, to function persist store. And I don't know why I don't have the autocomplete and persist reducer okay now here uh, what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna create the persist config it's gonna be an object this object need a key okay so this key it's gonna be important for you to finally this key don't need to, uh, don't you don't want it to change because if you change this key you change your persist i don't know if you see what i mean example that can be really nice um example you want to update an application from version one and two and you want to like <laughs> almost like the, remove everything the user has say so by doing this what's gonna happen it's if you say now my key is gonna be v2 example 
uh, it's gonna search everything who have been saved with the key v2 so if you have just changed it nothing gonna have it so for this application we're gonna just keep it root and for the storage for me i want the async storage from react native right there so after that it's gonna be pretty simple we just need to create finally uh, a persistent reducer okay this is gonna be a function with the persist reducer this one and uh, this one here this one here what we're gonna do now it's uh, so this persist reducer you need two things you need the config you just create finally and you're gonna need the uh, root reducer so your first reducer so for us this is this one here where i come back to the reducer after that i'm gonna take this persistent reducer i'm gonna replace my root reducer with this after that what i'm gonna need it's now here i'm gonna create my persistor this one need to wrap finally the persist store function and this one just need to pass the store so finally the store you just create here okay so now if we go back to app.js and i refresh my screen nothing happened what we need now is to change this um, this thing with a persist gate so if you look inside the chrome after that they say here if you are using react wrap your root component with persist gate this delay the rendering of your app blah 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 and everything so here what we need is just copy this line here inside the app so your first component you wrap this inside the provider is really important you want it inside the provider because you want this to have access to the store after that we're gonna need to receive here the persist store from your uh, store so this persist store we just have create and now inside this persist gate we pass this persist on and after that here we can call something when we want to loading okay so for me i'm gonna just create a new function called render loading print the scene and this render loading gonna just take finally the activity indicator the react native just to showing a, a little spinner so render loading this one the only thing gonna does it's a view with this activity indicator I'm gonna put a size of large because I want it. I want you to see it, and I'm gonna put container. So now, just by doing this, if I go back to my, I think something happened. Okay, okay, I see why. So export told me I make an error. Sorry about this. I just forget to say export const persistor. So now you should look and now we get persist store is not defined uh, should be good persist store is not defined so persist store persist store persist store perfect now we are good and now you see I already get a uh, bot because I saved it in the root before. So I'm going to just say root 2 just to show you. So now if I open my um, dev tool, okay, as you can see, we call this function read rate at the beginning, okay? So uh, persist after that called uh, read rate. Read rate here, get the key. And with this thing now, with this um, uh, key now, they give you this uh, like uh, next state uh, like that if you have something finally. For example, now if I say uh, John and I click submit, I update my username. Perfect. I'm going to refresh my screen. And now inside the process read rate, you're going to see the payload of this. It's a user object who add the username. And now because of this, they came and they know now they're going to search for your user reducer because of this. And they're going to update the username because of that. So this is finally all they work here. So you, you don't have a lot to do. And as you can see, if I reset root zero, root nothing, I get back Bob. So if I say root two, now I get John. So that's why I say it can be pretty nice when you want to update your app 
and you know that you need to update the all the local storage or you can finally just create a new key anything like this so i hope you enjoyed this little episode and uh, let me know i'm gonna put the github repo for this code on the description and i hope you enjoy it have a good night everyone bye